Acts chapter 1. The former treatise have I made of your fillers, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many invaluable proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. We say he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but he shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Luke, we just want to give some breakdown a little bit. Luke here, Luke is the writer of the book of Acts. Before they were one book, Luke and Acts, but they had to separate them. So Luke wanted to show Theophilus means God's lover. And it was a title used to undress people who held high office. So he's undressing the God's lover, those who love God and the Romans at the same time, those who held high office. <clears throat> Remember that Luke was a gender, right? So what is he undressing here? He is undressing that uh, Christianity is harmless. Is harmless because, you know, they were resisting it. That's why they killed the Lord. Because they were thinking that this thing is going to endanger their lives, their governments, and everything. They had failed to understand that Jesus had not come to establish a, a political party. So what they were guarding is their political interests, political influences. But now Luke is addressing this issue and is saying Christianity is therefore harmless. Even today, in our world today, Many people resist Christianity because they think it's like a dragon coming to bring them down. <laughs> but it's not a dragon. It's the way of life. It's the way of life to eternity. Amen. So it's not a dragon. So Christianity, Luke is addressing this issue that Christianity, Luke, is not harmless. It's not harmful. It's harmless. Why? Because also some Roman officials, they had embraced it themselves. They had embraced it and it had not changed their, their status. It had not changed their way of work. <laughs> they were still holding their offices. Therefore, Luke was trying to bring it to the light that Christianity is harmless. He was also trying to show that Christianity is innocent. There's no crime that someone has done. When you come to Jesus, it's not a crime. But do you know today, if you come to Jesus, the same power of the Pharisees is still working, and the Romans. That when you give your life to Jesus, even your family rejects you. It's like you've committed a crime. But here Luke, Luke is, is trying to show that Christianity is innocent. Why? Even the Roman judges could not find no basis for prosecution. Even for Jesus, did they find any fault in him? <laughs> did they? Only that people said, hey, crucify him. We don't want him held with him. But there was no fault. You can see how Pilate washed his hands. Because he didn't see anything that can be brought to the court of law. Christianity is innocent church. And that's why we need to rejoice when you know that you know Jesus. 
when you know that you have received Jesus, <laughs> you are innocent. Hmm? That's why there's even Pilate, even after he washed his hands, he washed his hands. Why? Because he found no fault in Jesus. So even those who persecute and kill you, they will kill you when you are still innocent. You have done no crime. Amen. So they say after that, he kept washing his hands until he died. Every time he was washing, he asked for water to wash the blood of Jesus off his hands. <laughs> what a torture. He continued declaring that you crucified the innocent one. Had he stolen anything from anyone? Huh? Akina Barabbas, they had done the worst. Maybe they had killed someone in their duty of stealing. But Jesus has stolen no one. No one's property. He had killed no one. In fact, he did good. So Luke was trying to prove, or he was trying to bring the point out that uh, Christianity is innocent. So whoever finds faults in you that you are born again, you should understand today that even if they look for issues to crucify you, they can crucify you, but you are still innocent. Can you imagine? You are put to death sentence, but you still are innocent. And that's why we find you in heaven. Amen. So know that you are innocent. <laughs> even when they judge you, you are innocent. He was also trying to prove that Christianity is lawful as the true fulfillment of Judaism, which was an approved religion in the Roman Empire. It was a fulfillment. It was not to do away. It was coming to fulfill the approved religion in the Roman Empire. Amen. So it wasn't coming to, to introduce another branch. It was a fulfillment. So to trace, to trace our Lord's unseen but actual continuance of his divine teaching and working. He was trying to trace the active ministry of the Holy Spirit as the abiding presence in the church. He was also trying to make us understand the disciples were in obedience, fellowship, and in prayer. Now, when you come to this chapter, you see the disciples, they are asking one of the serious questions there. <clears throat> and that's what we will start answering today. They were very concerned. Now, you died, you've rose again, and now you are about to go back and uh, you are showing yourself to us. And uh, I believe Peter, you know, Peter never used to keep quiet. <laughs> so when they came, therefore, together, verse 6, they asked of him, saying, Will thou now at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? When you, when you see that question, Jesus never answered. He never tried even, he never even dared to answer. What did he say? He said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. So as he answered them, <laughs> verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That is to say, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he'll bring to you the understanding. You'll understand. <laughs> Peter, you'll understand. But I want you to wait on me until in the upper room. And when the Holy Ghost comes, he shall reveal everything to you, <clears throat> you shall understand. Don't we have many questions even now as the church of Jesus Christ? Is in the church of Jesus Christ having so many questions today? Even concerning our theme, let us not look outside, let us look inside. Even concerning our theme, labor is a year of labor and, and greater works of God. Are you understanding that theme? 
How many of us have understood fully that theme? <laughs> huh? So, don't we have many questions whether how this is going to happen? And we like Mary going, now how is this going to happen? Huh? I've never been a preacher. How are these greater works going to happen? Is it Bishop Kalok is going to do these greater works? Is it Pastor Miriam? Or is it the leaders? But I want to say today, I'll answer you like Jesus. <laughs> you shall receive power <laughs> to do, to labor and to do these great works for God. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and to the Astamas, parts of the earth. That is to say, the greater works cannot be contained. They will move to the four winds of the earth. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the resistance because our persistence in the power of the Holy Ghost will break down the walls of resistance. Amen. So what has the Holy Ghost come to do today? <laughs> but then you shall see this happen when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The labor pains have begun. <laughs> Amen. The labor pains begins with the touch of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know those who can understand about the labor pains are the ones who have gone through it. Others, we are clueless. But I want to bring you to it, to the page, that the Holy Spirit will understand how the greater works will happen when the Holy Spirit will come upon us. Because number one is going to introduce is coming to induce the bathing pains. You know, the other day we defined the labor, and today we are defining it in a different way. <laughs> the same word, okay? But now it's the labor that uh, the pains, the, the pain that pushes our baby to be born. <laughs> Without the pain, the, the baby cannot be born. And there are some, you see, like Peter. He didn't know he was a great preacher. Until the Holy Ghost induced the pain. And he bathed the preaching. And the greater work started happening. Amen. So as from now, as we move on, there's going to be induced some pain. So that... That which needs to be birthed, the great works of God can be birthed. Amen. So it is going to be a time of discomfort and a time of prayer. Is anyone in pain, labor pains? Can they be laughing? Hmm? Huh? Can they be laughing? What goes on there? <laughs> huh? The time has come that the Holy Spirit induces this labor pain, that the greater works can be bathed now. Amen. You may have never known that you are a preacher, you are intercessor, <laughs> you are a prophet, until the Holy Ghost touches you. This is where the rubber I'm going to meet the rod. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The two of us, me and Bishop, we cannot... Deal with this theme. It's for all of us. How many received the Holy Ghost that day? They were 120. Amen. So it was not just the 11 disciples. So there were more. That is to say the Holy Ghost is here for everyone who wants to be touched and who wants to show forth the greater works of God. And I believe as the Holy Spirit touches us, you know, there are those there are those babies who want to just stay inside their mother's womb because there they are enjoying life. But I want to tell you, it turned the gospel church. The time for you to enjoy in the womb is over. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Lord has come to induce this labor pain. You see, like, um, like an ego, 
you see, like an ego. I want to just to explain slowly so that we understand because we have now come into the season of inducement. There are those who know I have a calling. There are those who know I'm called of God. And there are those who, okay, I just want to do it a little bit. Now you are going to be accelerated. You do it 100%. Hmm. <laughs> Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Ministries have to be delivered here. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has come to do the midwifing. If the pains won't come, he'll induce you. Amen. Because now is the time for bathing. Bathing of great works of God. So there's no way. Lazima tuone nini umekume mbeba yu miaziote. If the child is not born in nine months, what happens? There's a possibility that the mother can die with the child or the child can also die. You get the point. So what is the need of all these years that you've been fed? Okay. But still you are saying, no, nasikia kukula two ice cream. No. It's either the child is birthed and the Lord has come to birth the ministries. If it's the evangelist, it doesn't matter the age <laughs> for your information. It doesn't matter the age. The Lord has seen that uh, some of us are ready. Most of us are ready to be ushered in now to start laboring for God. And for them to labor for God, you see, kazi na anzangu wakati mtoto wamezaliwa. Kama ako pale ndani ni kulala tu, na kusema uletoe kachai. Lakini na kanyanga chini ndiyo kazi na anza mana. Sasa lazima umulishe, lazima umuoshe. Sasa ndiyo kazi na anza. You understand? Huh? I want to give you an illustration like the way the ego does. You know when the ego wants to lay the eggs and uh, bring forth <laughs> eaglets. So it looks for the high cliff and puts thorns, white thorns, so that will protect the, whatever, the nest so that the snake cannot come in and eat the eggs or blah, blah. You know, Snakes fear thorns because they fear they may pierce their eyes. So they don't dare wear their thorns, basically. They, they are afraid. So he also puts some grass. She also puts some grass. And she also puts some soft stuff like cotton or feathers. Everyone takes care of that, yeah? The young ones. <laughs> now the young ones, the, the only thing they know is who? We are in a soft blanket, and they don't want to come out, and they know at a particular time, the mother will bring something, and they'll open their beaks, and they'll eat something, and they continue sleeping. <laughs> that has been the church of Jesus Christ. But things are going to change. The situations that we are going on in the world are going to cause us to arise and call on God. Ah, uh, sleeping in the soft blanket cotton wool is almost coming to an end. Because when you even see the things that are going in the world, they are telling us it's an awakening call that the church will need to arise. Amen. So now a time comes that the mother realizes, oh, these, these, these ones have grown too big now. They can handle for themselves. I'm tired. <laughs> A time comes and the mother gets tired. I'm, I'm tired of bringing you food. Now you can go and get you for yourself. I'll show you how to go and hunt and fly and catch and bring and eat. Time to be living in the nest, in the womb. It's over. You know what he does? She comes with some quarrel. Blah, 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 get out, get out. And they are inside the blanket. They don't want to get out. Or they try and they jump back because this is their comfort zone. <laughs> she comes tomorrow and says, you people, you didn't hear, I say, you get out. <laughs> they try to jump out a little bit, but after two, five minutes, they jump back because, no, 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 no. This is where we are used. This is our comfort zone. You wonder, oh, the ground is so hard, there's gravel, there's what, now how do we step in? They go back. You know the third time she comes? <laughs> she pulls off the soft blanket. Now, 
the eaglets are in the nest, but now they are stepping on dawn. And they're like, hey, hey, Mama, you are killing us. You are killing us. What is all this now? We can't even enjoy our sleep. You've cut our hours of sleep. <laughs> she comes again and says, get out of this nest. It's time to get out. <laughs> huh? They step out. It's a little bit better. But where they used to know is, I mean, that's where we live. How can we come out to a, to a ground we don't know? They go back. <clears throat> so you know what happens? Some of us have been trying to, to, to cheat ourselves that the thorns can be better than outside the nest. You know what she does? She, brought, she comes one day mad. And I'm seeing the Holy Ghost coming mad in this season. And grabbing us by the neck. And throwing you to the depth. Amen. <laughs> so she comes and grabs one by the neck and throws her off the cliff. What do you think is going to happen? Our mother has grown mad. Now she wants to kill us. Daddy, where are you, Daddy? Where are you? <laughs> Come and see, our mother is killing us. <laughs> what is the ego mother trying to show the baby? You need to open your wings and and fly. So oh, before they come, he holds and takes, she holds and takes, takes it back. That day, no eating. It's like, I've never seen a weird mother like my mother. She wants to kill me. <laughs> she wants to kill me. When the daddy comes, she's like, yeah, you see, our mother today wanted to kill us. Only by the grace that we are alive. <laughs> but you know she doesn't care. Tomorrow she'll grab them again and again the same process. Now, until she sees them now stretch their wings and they fly. And the job is done. You are not created for the next. <laughs> your life all your years was not to stay in the nest. And I feel like the Holy Spirit has come to induce some labor here, to remove some cotton wool blanket in the church. I'm telling you the church will arise whether it likes it or not. We've walked in compromising situations for a long time. We've enjoyed comfort. Huh? The ministry changed from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. It changed to become a, a house, a warehouse. You get the point. Where when you come in, you are put in the fridge. And you keep enjoying the comfort of the church. And you keep waiting for the pastor to come again. And you open your beak and you receive some food. The time has come now. The warehouses are going to be broken down. Hallelujah. And God is going to disperse the Christians. <laughs> The Christians who are in Ukraine, are they there anymore? Huh? You know, it's because in Africa sometimes we enjoy some privileges. But let me tell you, even this corner, the Lord is going to shake it. <laughs> You'll find there's nowhere. The nest will not be comfortable. Hallelujah. The warehouses will no longer function. Because the Lord has come to stir up some labor pains. So that the greater works of God can be seen. So that God can be seen at work. Amen. Now do we understand what the Lord is coming to do? So there's no comfort zone here. In these seasons, there's no comfort Christianity. <laughs> the Lord has come to stir up the laborers. It doesn't matter where they are. Amen. He is going to do it. So that you know that he is the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you are in a beautiful church. Five story church. The Lord is coming. Because he has to induce this labor pain. So that the work of God can be done. Huh? How is it that people who are born again 10 years. They still come to church the same time they used to come. When they gave their life to Jesus the first year. Alikuwa nafika kanisani satano. Sahi ameokoka for 10 years. Kwanza amepandisha nafikanga 11:30. <laughs>
Maana inaenda na vile umekomaa. Si ni kweli uko na bibi na watoto. Ha? Huh? The Lord is coming. Utaingia it. I'm telling you. Na hakuna mtu atakushika. Because the hand of God is going to do a work here. Amen. So barrenness, you're saying the labor pains have begun. I may never know whether they have begun in the whole world, but I know in Eternity Gospel Church, the labor pains have begun. So we are not going to be like the eaglets waiting, stepping out and coming back. <laughs> Hallelujah. So barrenness was broken. Was the barrenness broken last year? The barren sang and rejoiced as a promise. The barren conceived. Did we say that? Restoration. He who didn't have children now can be a mother of seven. And it was a joyful day. Now the barren are about to give birth. And the labor pains have begun. Amen. Hmm. The labor pains of the ones who did not bear are here. Even creation groans with earnest expectation. Awaiting the revelation of the sons of God. You read that in Romans 8 verse 19. Creation is in labor too. Can you believe that? Labor is a sign of the times. Matthew 24 describes some of the labors the earth is going through. These are labor pains that announce to us the times we live in. When you read Matthew 24 verse 1 to 3, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to his buildings. Verse 2, do you see all these things? He asked, truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? The disciples called the attention of Jesus to the magnificent temple. Look at the labor of our fathers, they say. And to this Jesus replies, in a terrifying way. <laughs> he speaks of a greater labor. He is like going, you see this? You think it's labor? But there's great labor that needs to be done. And the great labor will result in the very destruction of the temple of their fathers that they boast in. A greater work for the greater temple, not one knot of stones, but the temple that, is, that Jesus himself is building. He is the house, he is the tabernacle. And the one of Solomon will need to come down for a greater work to be realized. A greater temple where Jew and gender will both worship. Because this one is only accommodating Jews. So it can't accommodate the entire world. <clears throat> a greater temple that will gather every tribe and tongue to bring the sacrifices to their hearts. The temple that Jesus says he will bring down and build up again in three days speaking he is speaking of his very life. You read that in John chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple. Jesus was a daring man. And I'll raise it again in three days. <laughs> they replied, Jesus, are you crazy? The work which was done in this place, it took 46 years to build this temple. And you're going to build it in three days. But the temple he, was, he had spoken of was his body. It was not the, the work of stones. In the day of greater works is labor pains, church. I call them labor pains because it is painful for the stones that have been built for 46 years to come down at once, really. Yet, these are labor pains because a greater work is on the horizon. The Lord this year is eager to tear down the works of men so that he can build a greater work. These are the strange things God will do this year. The greater works are in Christ. In him we live greater works. In him we move greater works. And he, in him we have our being of greater works. The temple he speaks of is his body. The greater works are his own. Solomon temple, even in all its magnificence, could not carry every tongue and a creed under the banner of the Lord. A day had come when it would yield to a greater temple, a truer tabernacle, and a superior priesthood. 
Aaron's priesthood would not know how to function in the greater temple because for this temple, he chose not Levites alone, but even tax collectors. To all who received him, he gave them the right to become children of God. So what does, it, what does this say? That when Jesus, in the three days, he will destroy the boundaries, the walls of the four corners of the temple, built for 46 years. But then the temple he is building will accommodate all who shall believe in Jesus from all the ends of the earth. Those who believed, he gave them power. This truly is a greater temple and a greater priesthood. And for it to be realized, the other one had to give way. No stone will be left atop another, Jesus said. And the disciples came to him in secret asking, what are the signs of these things? What are the signs of the end of age? What are the signs of your return? May we be like the disciples today as well as like Mary. Draw closer to the Lord to hear what are the signs of the greater works. These are the signs of the greater works, Jesus answered. <laughs> Verse 4. Verse 4. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Hey. Five. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and will deceive many. You'll hear of the wars and the rumors of wars. And we're hearing that today. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will raise against nation. And we're seeing that. And kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. Are there famines today? And earthquakes in various places. Are there earthquakes today? And these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you'll be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, men will turn away from the faith. And they will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. It's a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. Half many have come claiming to be the Lord. Huh? Even another one was saying is the one who, who sent the earthquake to you, to Turkey. Shame on us. You cannot equate yourself with God. The actions of God will remain. <laughs> Amen. Then it is time for great works. Has deception multiplied in the earth, church? Then it is time for greater works. These are labor pains. <laughs> These are labor pains pushing us to path something of divine. Amen. <laughs> that will show the world that indeed there is God. Are there wars and rumors of wars, church? Then it is time for greater works. Are people raising up against each other? Then the church, this is another labor pain, announcing that the time for greater works has come. Are there famines and earthquakes? Creation is groaning. These are birth pains. Greater works must be birthed. Oh, I didn't know that this year the Lord has brought her to the birthing place. Oh, maskini ya mungu. Mungu atusaidi. This team is taking another turn. Maybe scary, but it must happen. <laughs> and you see the good thing when, when the thing is birth, it's not even called by your name. It's called by the Father's name. Isn't it? <laughs> even when we give birth to the children, they are not called by our names. They are called by the Father's names. And whatever we are going to bear for Christ, it shall be for him, it shall be called by his name. So I think this theme of the year is turning in a nice or bitter or sour sweet situation here. But you are saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, amen. 
Aren't we saying that? Greater works will exalt truth over the deception that has gripped so many in this time. Let us read Acts 13, verse 6 to 12. We didn't know what we were coming into. We didn't know we were carrying someone's pregnancy. And now the time, he wants to see that which we have been bearing and carrying all these nine months. And now the time has come. He's shaky a little bit, terrified a little bit, but <laughs> there's no mother who is confident that you bring to go through the labor. But it doesn't need your confidence. It just needs you to be there to go through it. Amen. <laughs> they traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and so because. He wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for that is what is his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost who induces the labor pains of the greater works. Looking straight at Elimas and said, You are a child of the devil. And an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Verse 11. Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time. Not even able to see the light of the sun. Hallelujah. The bathing of the greater works of God. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him. And he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Immediately, huh? Verse 12. When the proconsul saw what had happened, immediately, he, he never even waited to be told this Jesus who died and rose again. He immediately, he believed. <laughs> Hallelujah. For he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Paul and Barnabas together confront a great sorcerer who always perverted the truth. He operated by deception and by mockery to turn people away from the truth. When Paul and Barnabas met him, they felt the pangs of labor. They knew this was a sign of the time that greater works must prevail. You sorcerer, you are about to meet the God of the greater works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That is the bad thing we are talking about. Hmm? Where you feel this awakening in your spirit. And someone can go blind for some few hours at your word. <laughs> or the rain can go for three and a half years at your word. The unrest among the nations can only be resolved by the Prince of Peace. It is Jesus who makes wars to cease and battles to end. He's the one who reigns victoriously. Haven't we sung that? He wears the victor's crown. And who goes forth conquering and to conquer, right? When we see nation rising against nation, it's a sign there are labor pains, greater works are on the horizon. We have also seen this in the scripture. The Lord said to her in Genesis 25, 23, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Nation against nation in the womb of Rebecca. Do you know that story? Edom and Israel, one greater and another lesser, one loved over the other. This battle between these two brotherly nations was a heavy one, that it was only stilled by the mighty man of war himself. It took jo Jacob to wrestle with God for his war between him and his out to end. When Israel wrestled with God, the battle shifted from it being between him and Israel. No, God took up Israel's case. God comes to the defense of Israel. The one who wrestles with God and men, we know that he pre and prevails. It was after this account that we stopped hearing Jacob fearing his brother. 
greater works will bring us here too. I can feel the labor pains of nation against nation. Those of the covenant against those without the covenant. We will do a greater warfare too. We shall wrestle. This is a season of the labor pains of wrestling. Those who are here on Friday. Was it not a wrestling ground? Prayer and intercession. When the labor pains come, it's not business as usual. <laughs> Amen. I like that. It cannot be comfort anymore and no business anymore. We shall wrestle with God a whole night until he blesses us. Until he makes the wars to cease to the ends of the earth. So that we never worry about Edom again. So that we increase in prosperity and in peace. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. That's what Jesus said. You will be hated for my sake. This is another labor pain. Huh? So we don't expect people to say nice things about us. It is another sign that we must now engage the gear of great, greater works. When we are talking of greater works, we are actually saying the Lord has come to contend with the enemy and assure it publicly that he has prevailed. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm looking at it like, a, you know that the, 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 is it table tennis or what do you call it? That kambiro na pigaivi na mingina na pigaivi. Can I touch it? Yeah. And the fans are watching. And soon, one of us is going to come out of victor. Amen. So, we are in this table now. <laughs> the labor pains. To show who is the victor. And we always know that Jesus will overcome. When they persecute you for your obedience, obey again. This is what the apostles did. After being beaten and warned not to preach in the name of Jesus, they went back to the place of prayer. We read that in Acts 4. <laughs> you know, the labor pains cannot stop until that which needs to be bathed is bathed. It can't stop. And if it stops, then there might be a stillbirth. So this labor pain increases. Inanza kidogo kidogo, inapanda. So this is the second hour, right? We are coming to the third hour, March. We are coming to the fourth hour. I'm telling you, as we get to the twelfth hour, something must happen. Amen. There is no reverse gear when the labor pains come. Where is it? Siku anataka ivi. It's only moving forward. There's no turning back. There's no reverse, Duncan. It's moving and moving. You understand better, Doc. <laughs> Acts 4, 23, verse that, up to verse 31. On their release, you see they were arrested. Peter and John went back to their own people. And they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. Verse 24, when they have this, they raise their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations range the nations plot in vain? Verse 26, the kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against this anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Verse 28. They did what your power and will had desired beforehand and should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. On Sunday, on Wednesday, we say, God delivered us from the spirit of fear. And now we have the spirit of boldness. For those who have gone through labor pains, they know you need boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need boldness to go through this because, you know, you're going to bring forth something of value. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy Jesus, your servant Jesus. Verse 32, and after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and greater work again. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Again, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. After persecution came greater works. Then disciples knew it was a sign to them that it was time for greater things. You hear it in their prayer. Consider their threats and enable your servants. Hallelujah. This is how we should pray too. Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to do even greater works than this. Consider their threats and stretch out your hand to heal and perform greater works. So we are saying when you are in labor, there's nothing that can silence you. <laughs> even if you are screaming, even if a doctor, they come hundred of them in the entire hospital. Nobody can stop you. <laughs> we know that very well. Yeah? Consider the labor pains of persecution for the sake of the Lord and enable us to do greater works. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many, the Lord said, will grow cold. This is another labor pain. It pains us to see the coldness in the church today. Yeah? The cold heart because of wickedness. Called to the things of God. This is a sign that great works are needed to throw out the coldness from among us. Israel had become cold too one time. Elijah knew he, this coldness needed fire. He declares a contest of fire. The coldness of Israel was a labor in pain in the heart of the prophet. May the coldness of the saints be in us. A labor pain too so that we birth greater and fiery works. Beloved, we shall continue with labor. We shall continue. We have just introduced next week. But let us realize that the pangs of birth have begun. May they bring us to labor until we birth forth these greater works of God. Amen. So, have we understood what the Lord is saying today? Hmm? May I compare this labor pain with some, let's say, holy anger? Yeah? Whereby the situation in your family, it can cause you to come and pray here for 24 hours nonstop. Can something stir you up? The Lord is coming to stir up something that there will be discomfort. It will not be sleeping night as usual. You will be able to sleep not in your bed, but on the floor. The, comfort, the discomfort, the Lord is saying, I'm bringing some discomfort in the church now. I'm removing the cotton wool blanket for the eaglets. <laughs> Some of us will find ourselves that our, 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 our praying place <laughs> uh, is not in the bed. It's in the church 24 hours. Amen. What is the Lord saying? There's, there are situations, the labor pains, there are things that are coming to shake us until we arise. Until, you see now, even when the plane is taking off, there has to be that burning of heat, you know, so that it can rise. So that is basically what the Lord has come to do to us. For the greater works to be seen, it will not be Christianity as usual. You are usual. Moa imeisha. Sawa, sawa. The Christianity that is normal. No, you know. Why are you bothering yourself? Huh. Relax. Jesus died on the cross and he finished every war. No. <laughs> deception has moved along in the body of Christ. But the Lord has come to remove the blanket of deception. Someone will be angry with the situation that is going on in the church of Jesus Christ today. And they will arise like Elijah. People have fallen and they are bowing down to idols. And that will make you not to sleep. It will cause you to call on God. Amen. And when we arise, something is going to be birthed. So there's a stirring in the spirit, church. And this one is beyond me and Bishop. It is the hand of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when it gets there, my only work is to add more fire. <laughs> Amen. Because I know something is going to be passed. Hallelujah. How will this ministry be known? There has to be a starring. <laughs> How will the youth be known in this ministry? There has to be a starring. There has to be a release of some measure of some labor pains. So that our youth will say, 
<laughs> Whether we live or we die, <laughs> we are going to preach this gospel. Amen. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. Glory be to God. Do we understand, church? Do we understand the seasons that we have come in? What is the need of you giving your life to Jesus? And now it's been 20 years. And you have never won one soul to Jesus. I, Huh? Iyo ni ngombe tasa? Ama ni nini? Iyo si ngombe tasa? Na inafanya nini kanisani? Tulise mambare nezilisha. Lazima kushekiwe mwanadamu. Aruke kama masai hapa. Na kuambia ukweli. Ha? <laughs> na atoke umbiri nchili. 20 years, 15 years. You have never brought a single soul to the Lord. What are you doing in the church? That's why the Lord is going to introduce. You know, you can even forget your way home. Huh? The inducing power is very strong. That's why when the disciples were induced, you know, Peter was enjoying the comfort. Oh, Jesus, eh, panga, na panga, na ni But the day he was induced, he forgot the way to go home. He started there and there. <laughs> he never found his way back home. That's what we are talking about. And he wanted to bring the entire Jerusalem to Jesus. And they say, in two weeks, the gospel has entered into almost every household in Jerusalem. What a labor pain. Hallelujah. This is the labor pain I'm looking that the Lord is going to induce here as he did in the day of Pentecost. That no one will be able to rest here. Unakutana na muenda wazimu pale moa. Kabla hata waja wanja shtuko memu wangu kia unakemea ro chafu. Anamuka anasema kwani kulikuwa kunaendelea nini. Unamuambia ingia kanisa ndiyo ile. Na ito itani to gospel church. We are going to print pamphlets. Let me tell you something. We have to walk in obedience in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because there are things that the Lord is going to do in our midst in this season. There's something that the Lord is coming to, to do with us. Amen. So we must arise. Does it make you happy when you see the madmen walking there collecting papers? <laughs> we'll be able to stop our cars and get out and say, hey, come here. Atungojia seme ni nani. Ambi hata kama unaitwa Lingon, hata kama unaitwa Devan Dam, get out and go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Leave the man. <laughs> Hallelujah. If something like that happens, what do you think will happen here on Sunday? Tutaeka hema pale nje. Si kweli? Mimi nimechoka kuhubiria kanisa ya Omena. <laughs> Nataka mbuta. <laughs> Na tilafia kubwa. Si kweli? <laughs> Ukishika unashika tu wamena ni twingi lakini kwa kichungi. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not trying to call you over about this. What I'm saying, I'm <laughs> the greater works. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Where people will be running to church at six o'clock. Tutakutu wa menja hapa. They are waiting for the preacher. Amen. That is the time when we shall know that the labor pains have really worked. Let me tell you something. The Lord is going to create discomfort. This season, there will be no comfort. I'm telling you. Those who believe in Jesus, and as we have been brought, <laughs> we are not caring about those who are one month pregnant. When this word came, it is telling us we are full time. Hallelujah. Ni <laughs> masatu. We are counting hours. And we are in for it. Hallelujah. We are counting hours. As we are ready. We are ready to be birthed. Amen. We are ready. All these years. We are ready. <laughs> so, kazi meanza. Tuinukeni njameni. Tunataku msifu buwana. Tunataku msifu buwana. But the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit has come to induce labor pains. <laughs> so that the church may arise. That the church may arise. And they show for the power of God. The power of God. <laughs> to show forth the power of God. To show forth the greater works of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let us clap to the Lord this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Let us give him a worship, a praise of our clap in the name of Jesus. Appreciate the Lord this morning for what he has come to do. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Here I touch in Jamin. Here I touch in Jamin. Ah, here I touch. Here I touch. Here I touch. Here I touch. Let us appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord for what he has come to do. That is comfort. It shall be for God to show forth his greater works. That he can use a man. He can use the clay to do his works. Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord today because he has chosen you. He has chosen you to show forth his power to show forth his greater works. Hallelujah. 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 